Uh, good morning. Uh, I am Shelly Parker, and this is the Telework in the Triangle webinar. I'm the Sustainable Travel Services Manager for Go Triangle, and I'll be moderating the panelists in the Q&A uh, session at the end of today's webinar. And I wanted to thank you all for joining us. We're very excited to be doing this. This is our first official webinar. So forgive us if there are any little snags along the way. Thank you for registering for Telework in the Triangle. We're excited to have this intro to Telework session to review the basic programming considerations before you establish a program, or perhaps it's just something for you to revisit if you have a longstanding program. As you can see, this program is provided by Go Triangle's employer services. Many in the Triangle may consider Go Triangle just to be the big green buses that drive around I-40, but we're actually more than that. We also coordinate a family of services across municipalities and universities to provide commute services to employees and students. So whether it's information on establishing a telework program, a transit one-on-one -on -one event, uh, to reach out to riding the bus, we're here to help. Next month, we will hold a celebration for the Go Perks Commuter Incentive Program. Bike Month is coming up in May, and we host Share the Ride and Seed to help more than 10,000 commuters across the state find carpools. So regardless of how you want your employees to arrive for a successful workday, our panelists and partners across the triangle are here to help. As just a few reminders, or in case you weren't logged in yet, um, the Zoom software has an option. If you hover at the bottom of the screen, you will see that you can select chat, raise your hand, or Q&A. Throughout the session, if you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box and I will be monitoring those. At the end of the webinar, we'll have the panelists review all of the questions. Additionally, we will provide follow-up contact information afterward, so you can reach out if you would like further assistance in moving forward with developing a telework program. You should also see a poll. Um, oh, sorry guys. Uh, you should also see a poll showing up now. And if you could take a few moments to answer these three questions, it will help us understand a little bit more about those participating today. And we had about two thirds of the group participate in the poll. Um, so most of the people who are attending, uh, their companies have telework uh, or they're interested in telework. Uh, the work-life balance is very important as is the environmental impact. And uh, we're all watching the webinar alone. So hopefully you had a good commute or you're teleworking today so that that was um, a very easy option for you to get to. This is our poll uh, that you actually completed during registration where we asked to find out where your organization is in the telework process. And we have a very good mixture of those who are attended today. So uh, thank you for participating in that. Some of you may be revisiting telework as you have a longstanding program, but for the rest of you, we hope this is very educational. Uh, the top questions that you had um, during the session, um, registration session, we're looking at best practices, determining policies, um, and what problems people have experienced in telework arrangements. And we use that content to develop the programming today, where what we'll really be looking at is the who, what, where, why, how, and when uh, someone can telework or how your company can establish a program. So this is meant to be an introductory level webinar. If you want more information, we will be following up afterwards and are very interested in helping you at whatever point you are in establishing your program. But that said, with no further ado, I wanna go ahead and get us into the actual presentation. So Mary Self has been, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Mary Sell has been in the transportation industry for five years and works directly with employers as the best workplaces for commuters coordinator for the Triangle region. Her main objective is to help communities and workplaces take incremental steps to help realize mode shift. You'll regularly see Mary cruising through Raleigh by bike with a kid or two in tow. She's a bike and pedestrian commissioner for the city of Raleigh and volunteers her time with Oaks and Spokes to advocate for better bike infrastructure. 
at Triangle J Council of Governments. Mary works as a planner with transportation demand management programming and has been on staff since 2015. Nothing makes her happier than seeing a friendly face around town. So say hello if you see her in the bike lane. Our second presenter today is Kim Johnson. She's been with Go Triangle for 11 years and is a proud UNC Chapel Hill alum with a BA in radio, television, and motion pictures. She also has a certificate from the University of Washington, Seattle in sustainable transportation planning and livable communities. She works with employers outside of the Beltline in Wake County to create and improve their commuter benefit programs, helping organizations meet various goals, but mostly to reduce parking demand and to increase employee morale through commuter programming. Kim enjoys being part of the solution and the transition of providing achievable, sustainable commuter programming for employers, featuring transportation options that help attract and retain quality talent as Wake County continues to grow, attracting over 67 people a day. Kim also gets to telework twice a week. And Lindsay Gavin will be wrapping us up at the end. Uh, she's an analyst at Triangle J Council of Governments, where she gathers and analyzes data from various sources related to energy use and environmental impacts of Triangle Area Transportation Programs. She previously worked as a climate epidemiologist at the California EPA Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, studying the health impacts of extreme heat events, and as an environmental health and safety engineer for Hunt Oil Company. She holds a master's in public health from Yale and a BS in biological systems engineering from the University of Wisconsin. Lindsay is a member of the Environmental Advisory Board for the town of Carborough. And that said, Mary, with Best Workplaces for Commuters, will kick us off. Thanks, Shelley. Um, so teleworking is an arrangement where employees work remotely, which is often done from home, but sometimes done from another remote location, like the library or a coffee shop. Teleworking allows for additional work-life flexibility for employees while creating a more content workforce, allowing employers to have better retention of staff long-term. Although many employees have informal working arrangements with an employer where they may opt to work from home on an ad hoc basis, this webinar will, will re review policies and procedures to formalize this work arrangement to ensure a smooth and accountable process for all parties. So, Sorry, Shelley, but I'm having difficulty making my slides move. There we go. When we're talking about teleworking, it's important to distinguish that this does not mean we're necessarily referring to programs where staff can work from home as their exclusive work arrangement. Although there are some jobs and industries that are performed 100% from home, it's much more common to have staff work one to two days per week from home versus 100% of their time. You can see on this table that shows general trends with teleworking that nationally and internationally there are many who work one to three days a week from home and just a few that do this as an all day every day arrangement. Looking at a case study for an organization that launched teleworking, companies like UPS have a lot of success implementing this work arrangement. Senior staff overseeing the program launch noted, after the launch of our pilot program, the results spoke for themselves. Productivity when working from home jumped by 17% and 86% of UPS teleworkers agreed that job satisfaction improved when reporting to work without leaving home. Thanks to the work-life balance benefits of working from home, UPS also found that teleworkers save an average of 87 minutes a day by eliminating their commute and they use that time to get more work done, spend time with family and exercise. In addition to being a great efficiency productivity booster for their employees, UPS staff overseeing the program also see a positive impact of teleworking for the environment. By eliminating commutes just a few times a month, the UPS teleworkers involved in the initial pilot program kept more than 46 tons of pollution out of the air over the course of a year. They also kept 93,000 vehicle miles eliminated from the Metro Atlanta roadway, reducing congestion, and avoiding that cost to employers in the Atlanta region by nearly $3 billion annually in lost productivity. So it's a pretty compelling success story from an industry that you would not always picture as the ideal candidate for this type of work arrangement, given their door-to-door -door delivery background. This shows that many industries have at least portions of their workforce where teleworking would be a viable work arrangement for some of their work tasks. When consulting why companies should offer teleworking, there's a lot of data to back up the importance of offering this work arrangement. 
Among employees with high access to flexibility, 72% are not at all likely to try to find a new job, 17% are somewhat likely, and 12% are very likely. In contrast, 26% of employees with low access to flexibility are very likely to try to find a new job in the coming year. To remain competitive and ensure your company is recruiting the best and brightest, it's important to incorporate benefits and work arrangements that they value. Offering workplace flexibility creates a more content workforce and allows employees to retain the talent they have and attract new talent. In our current working world, there's often an expectation that staff can constantly be able to respond to work emails and requests, and providing teleworking as a work arrangement allows for a better work-life health balance. It's important to determine what types of work or tasks can be performed from home to determine if teleworking is suitable for you and for your workplace. To see if teleworking is a good option, first think through work schedule, position descriptions, and responsibilities, and workplace communication strategies that would allow for effective workload management while you telework. All these considerations should be thought through to ensure a successful experience teleworking. I think I just covered that. When you're looking to start a teleworking program or formalize it at your workplace, it's important to engage the right stakeholders internally to solicit buy-in and start the conversation. Critical people to engage internally include your HR department, supervisory staff, and managers. It's important to set clear expectations from the onset so everyone's on the same page. A great way to do this is to set up a training with one of our partners to come on site to do a 101 course to help guide your workplace on implementation of teleworking and best practices to follow. Here's a list of all our program partners that are available throughout the Triangle. This program has been running since 2018, and all these individual programs provide TDM outreach and education within their specific jurisdictions. So you can talk to these programs about different ways to engage with employers and also with the universities in your, in your area. Another useful tool is the Telework Toolkit website, which was created to provide a guide for all workplaces that are considering implementing this work arrangement. Lindsay Gavin will provide a holistic overview of this website later in the Telework today. For now, Kim Johnson will provide a case study of a workplace that has started this program regionally as an example for you all to learn from. With that, let's go over to Kim. Kim, if you are speaking, we have you, um, we cannot hear you right now. Got it. Okay, sorry. Um, I would like to just take a few moments to talk about bringing the dream of a telework program um, to a successful reality. Um, I'll, re I'll be reviewing the process that we went through at Bob Barker, and theirs is a great story of just teamwork and everything falling together perfectly. Um, and many can kind of relate with some of the hurdles that it took to get the program off the ground. Um, so a little bit about Bob Barker. They are the nation's largest detention center suppliers. And at the time, in 2013, they had two offices that I was working with in Peak Wave Arena with about 140 employees. And I primarily worked with their vice president of corporate social responsibility. And she had some major sustainability goals and some impressive accomplishments. For instance, they installed a solar farm on the roof of their main distribution center, and they also um, installed energy efficient lighting. They instituted a recycling program that diverted an amazing 95% of their waste from the landfill. And they also um, provided electric charging stations for team members with electric cars. So, um, but they wanted to do more than, um, than just that to reduce the carbon footprint of their employees. So they began to look at their employees' commute. 
And we looked at the usual, um, promoting transit, carpooling, vanpool, and other active transportation modes. And then from the employees, there was a little bit of rumbling um, from employees wanting to work from home. However, there were some powers that be within Bob Barker that were not that enthusiastic about the idea. And I'm sure that you've probably heard some of the reasonings um, against letting employees work from home. So um, when we began talking about the possibility of pulling together a program, it was really clear that they needed to sell this idea and they needed to identify the why. See, they needed to, um, they needed to, to tell why, you know, it was important for their organization to have a, a teleworking program. And I think that this step is very fundamental in the process because you need to figure out how does this telework program fit into, you know, how is it beneficial for your company? You know, how does it fit into your stated goals? And is it more than just providing an employee option to work remotely? What else will the telework program accomplish? This, this step is major, um, especially if you're trying to establish a sustainable program, just going through the process of making a really good business case for a teleworking program. So secondly, um, it takes a lot more than just one champion um, to pull a program together. It's important to identify a team that can work together to pull, the, to pull all the aspects of the program together. At Bob Barker, we had someone from human resources, from legal, IT, facilities, and, and more. So if you know that it's an uphill battle to get a program off the ground because of resistance from upper management, you need to identify what their reservations are and you know, find out, are there concerns, security, is it productivity, communication, whatever the concern is, it's important to root it out. And then you can work with the team to address these issues um, and find a palatable solution. With Bob Barker, this particular step was the longest part of the entire process. And we found that it's also important to make it a formal policy. So offering a telework arrangement should be kind of like any other um, work arrangement. It should be in writing. And calling it a work arrangement instead of a benefit means that only selected employees can qualify. Making it formal removes the likelihood that it will be abused or simply misunderstood. So we provided Bob Barker with several examples of telework policies, employee agreements, training materials, and a whole lot more. And we also suggested that they sit down and have some detailed discussions with their IT department to be sure that everything is covered and to address any foreseeable issues or roadblocks or roadblocks with technology or with security. So with the team in place, they were able to divvy out all the materials we provided and quickly come up with a policy and finally, a pilot plan. So from our first meeting where we started discussing teleworking to when they actually launched the pilot, it was about four months. The, um, the team there was pretty phenomenal. So as a plus for the higher level executives um, that were getting pushback on developing a program, a pilot means that it's not permanent. It means that we're just trying this out and a pilot keeps everyone in the pilot on their best behavior. And it allows your brand new teleworkers to adjust to this new work arrangement. And you know, they can let you know if something is not working out without penalty. And in your pilot, you can assess um, any opportunities that 
come at that surface for training that for both the teleworker and for their managers. Running a telework pilot also gives you an escape patch just in case you figure out that there are job functions or simply employees that don't do well teleworking. And um, so it gives your organization the opportunity to tweak the program until it's at optimal performance. So Bob Barker ran this pilot program that we launched for an entire year before it became policy. Their whole office teleworked every, fr every Friday during the pilot, and it allowed them to reduce their carbon footprint um, much more than a typical telework program, which um, employees work remotely on different days. So since everybody was doing it on the same day of the week, they were able to and they were able to eliminate those employees commute um, for that particular day and reduce overhead expenses and offset their carbon footprint even more by basically closing the office this one day a week. During the pilot program, they discovered that some employees had technical difficulties um, with their internet connection, and um, some employees just preferred not to do it. And so they, they miss the social atmosphere of working in the office. And it was truly a hit um, with their employees so much so that in 2015, they were named by um, Triangle Business Journal as one of the Triangle's best places to work. So with that, um, uh, that kind of wraps up the, the experience that we had with Barb Barker. So I'll hand it over to Lindsay and she will go over um, the resources that are available on our website. Thanks, Kim. Are y'all able to see my screen? Yes. Great. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Gavin, and as Kim said, I'm going to walk you through this great resource, the Telework Toolkit at ncTelework.org, and I'm going to show you what you can find on this site and how it can be useful to help build support for a telework program in your workplace. So again, the site is www.ncTelework.org, and that will bring you to this homepage. <laughs> The main navigation menu across the top has five main categories, and those are about, best practices, case studies, getting started, and a contact form page. I'm not going to go through each and every page, but I do want to highlight a few of the helpful resources and documentation that you can find on this toolkit. So under this About tab, we have a submenu that offers information on the benefits of telework, examples of alternative work schedules, and the misconceptions associated with teleworking. You've heard a little bit about some of the benefits from our other speakers this morning, but let's just take a look at what the toolkit outlines as teleworking benefits. The toolkit outlines firstly benefits to the employer, and these include employee retention, satisfaction, and morale. Additionally, loosening constraints on parking demand is a great side benefit, especially if your office is in an urban area that parking might be a little bit more in demand. On the employee side, even occasional telework can help reduce stress and lower commuting costs for employees. And we can see from this graphic which on the toolkit is interactive, so you can click a number of the graphics on the toolkit and dive into the actual data a little bit deeper if you're really curious. But we can see from this graphic um, that the rate of teleworking has grown immensely in recent years. Last fall, a report was released that showed that behind driving, teleworking is now actually the second most popular commute mode in the U.S. 
Finally, I just want to point out a link on this page um, to a commute calculator right here where users can input some basic information about their commute and understand what teleworking would mean to them in terms of financial savings and environmental benefits. The next tab on the toolkit is the best practices section. And here I'll just focus on these first two subpages, which outline who the best candidates at your work site might be for teleworking and some tips on how to manage teleworkers. So some of the best candidates for telework are those who may be social and could benefit from working in an uninterrupted environment but would still be communicative with managers and coworkers through online messaging systems and emails as needed. They're well-trained, meaning they understand their expectations and how to perform all the duties associated with their job. And another great characteristic of those equipped for teleworking is that they're independent. They're self-motivated and they're able to manage their time well. This page includes some other information uh, on deciding who's a good candidate for teleworking. On the flip side, this page outlines some tips and suggestions for managers who are considering granting teleworking benefits to some of their employees. Information can be found on training, how to set expectations, tips for effective communication, building a trusting environment among managers and employees, and a suggestion that managers try teleworking themselves to become more aware of the benefits and challenges associated with teleworking. We've definitely seen increased interest in both occasional and regular telework. Uh, through our most recent commuter surveys in the Triangle, we had about 70% of respondents express interest in each type of arrangement. The third section that I'll bring you to on the toolkit is this case studies area. Here we have interviews that we've conducted with four area employers, NIEHS, Orange County Government, the Central Line of Council of Governments, and Go Triangle, who have all implemented teleworking policies. These studies are all clickable, and you can read in depth about what each of these organizations has faced with getting started with the telework program, what technology considerations they've thought of, if they've experienced any downsides to teleworking and how they've overcome those, and just some general advice from those who've been through the setting up of a program before. Next, a really important piece of the toolkit that I think most of you will find the most helpful is here under the Get Started tab, and it includes sample telework policies and some IT guidelines. So here at the bottom of the sample policies page, we have 12 downloadable documents the first two are some basic high-level agreements that can be amended and customized to fit your organization's needs. And then below that, we show examples of telework policies um, from area organizations that have put these together for their own agreements. This page also provides a lot of information on how to put together a policy and which elements to include, such as the purpose of the agreement, definitions, eligibility, equipment and facility needs, liability, and documentation and paperwork. Another very helpful page is this IT guidelines page, which outlines technology considerations, including virtual private networks or VPNs and virtual desktops, as well as links to some products, um, optional products for VPNs, video and web conferencing tools, again, with links to some example products that help facilitate this, and finally, online collaboration tools. And once again, links to some product options in, in this area. Finally, the last page of the toolkit is a contact form. And here, you can leave your name, email address, and a question or a comment, which is directed to us here at Triangle J. And we can help put you in touch with the Go Triangle and other experts in the area 
to help you understand and get started with a teleworking program or to help facilitate training for your employees. You can also contact Go Triangle for personalized assistance, either by phone or in person. So thank you for listening this morning, and remember to please visit www.nctelework.org to explore this toolkit further. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and give control back to Go Triangle. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Okay, um, so thank you to all of our panelists um, for your participation. And um, you all have a very uh, varied background in what you do and the type of work and approach that you do. I wanna give the, um, the participants an option uh, to use the Q&A or the chat boxes. And again, if you hover down at the bottom of your screen, you should see those options pop up and we would love to hear your questions. Um, in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and let you answer some of the ones that came in prior to the webinar. So, um, in terms of teleworking, I know at least two of you are able to telework. Um, what, what does your typical um, telework day look like in terms of best practices? What What is it that you do in order to make sure that you have the best telework day possible? I can answer that. Um, this is Kim. For, um, for me, uh, either the morning that I am teleworking or the day before, I will send over um, just a list of what I'm working on. Um, and for that particular day, and I will also make sure that I'm available via um, chat, email, and by phone. I also have in my um, calendar, so if other employees, other co-workers are trying to locate me, um, they can look and see that I'm working with them on that particular day, and they can free to you know, to either send me a, a chat or an email or to just call me on my cell phone. I can elaborate on that. Um, since I have young children, I also have to think about child care considerations. This is Mary speaking. Um, so uh, we didn't explicitly mention that as much in this webinar, but that is really important to think about both for elder care and for young children, what you're going to do um, for them. So they just have their normal routine of going to school. And I pretty much have my normal routine of sitting down just at a different computer at home. And I don't, um, you know, I just kind of seamlessly pick up my work day on my telework day because my, I use the exact same portal to log in for work and all my work is right there and I just get going. This is Stephanie. I work at Go Triangle as well. Um, one of the things that helps me is so that I don't miss calls and, you know, we all get caught up with things. I forward my uh, work phone to my uh, cell phone so that I don't miss any calls. And I, it's pretty much seamless to anyone calling in to Go Triangle to reach me because I pick up the calls just as I would any others. Um, that also alleviates the need for giving out your cell phone number if you, if you don't have a work cell phone. Um, to others because it just transfers seamlessly over over and you can pick up the calls and uh, they're none the wiser. So that helps me. Great. Thank you. Um, Mary, as part of her presentation, mentioned having one of the partners come and speak with um, human resources or executive staff at a meeting. Kim, did you do that with Bob Barker and what was what was that scenario like? What materials did you take with you? Did you do a conference call in person? Could you uh, share a little bit on that for those who are in the very beginning stages and may be reaching out for assistance? Okay, so when I was working with Bob Barker, I did not meet with um, with the executives who had reservations about it, but they. Um, I did express that it was important that they sit down and talk with them and really identify what, you know, what is it? You know, for some, for some people, you just think, you know, when, another, when a, a person that has like old-fashioned um, work values 
and they think about teleworking and they say no, you just may think that they just want to see butts in seats. If they don't see you, you're not working. And sometimes that's not really what, um, what the issue is. Sometimes it's security. Um, it can be that they, you know, that they feel like their information has to be secure at all times and not knowing how secure someone's home network is to keep that information um, secure, keep their company information secure. So that's an issue. And if you don't um, identify what the issue is, maybe it is that they need to see the person um, and, and they don't feel like they are doing their job if they're not looking at them the entire time during the day, then that really is an issue of productivity. So being able to identify what tools you're going to put in place, what training is going to be put in place, and how are you going to hold the employees accountable for the same work that they would have done in the office while they're working remotely. So, did that answer the question? So you said that you did not meet with the executives. Who was it that you were actually meeting with to help establish the program and, and what were those meetings like? I was meeting with their vice president of social responsibility. So she um, did a lot of sustainability work. She, um, she's the one that spearheaded their recycling program and the uh, solar farm on the roof and she was really concerned about making sure that they reduced their carbon footprint, that they were um, responsible with, with all the resources that they, that they were consuming. And so her concern was when she was looking at everything, you know, can we eliminate um, more? Can we reduce this more? And when they figured out that their employees contributed to such a huge um, portion of the company's carbon footprint, they were trying to figure out, well, how can we reduce that? And telework was one of the solutions to reduce it. And it just was an added bonus to be able to do it all on one day. So that made it even more impactful to their goals because they, they were able to basically close that office on Fridays. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you mentioned sustainability as a goal, Lindsay um, or Mary, I'm wondering if, you know, what do you find are the common motivations for companies wanting to start a telework program? Is it a sustainability issue? Is it a real estate issue? Um, is it more about the employees themselves? I mean, I certainly think from the, the lens of best workplaces for commuters, which is the program that I help implement here that recognizes employers that are offering exemplary commuter benefits in the triangle. Um, that certainly employee attraction and retention is a, an important point of the conversation. Um, not all of the companies in the triangle are as progressive as Bob Barker is with sustainability. That's wonderful. And when you have that as a conversation point, that's a great place to start. But it's kind of about determining what it is, what the values are that apply to each company and kind of leaning into the specific selling points of this work arrangement, um, whatever those different things may be. And I'll say from an employee standpoint, we survey commuters in the triangle every couple of years. And the number one motivator for trying an alternative work arrangement is usually saving money, saving gas costs and maintenance costs on your car or um, fare for transit options. So money is really important to folks. And the environmental concerns are there. Um, but the number one response we usually get is to save money. So Lindsay, I, this is Stephanie again. I agree with I agree with that for the employee, for the employer. In some circumstances, not all, because uh, sometimes that uh, it circles back around to to different um, arrangements. But from an employer perspective, it also may um, contribute to shared work, uh, the ability to have shared workspace, 
in the office and reduce their own real estate costs. Well, if I can chime in, I know for, um, for Go Triangle, uh, one of the reasons that Go Triangle started a telework program was because they were interviewing talent and they needed to offer that, um, that as an option to attract the type of talent that they, that they wanted. They were literally interviewing people and that was one of the questions that was coming up. So um, for some, it, it is an issue of talent attraction and retention. And, you know, we've also experienced what you were saying, Stephanie, with needing to, um, to better utilize office space to fit more people in tighter spaces. So um, teleworking has been beneficial for doing that um, for that travel as well. Mary, uh, sorry, Mary, in your response earlier, you mentioned that you just signed in um, to the same portal that you're using um, when you're in the office. And I know that technology is typically one of the scariest things when you go in and you're working with someone who's a VP um, of sustainability or a human resources director because that's not their area of expertise. So from your side as a teleworker, can you talk a little bit about what that experience like is for you and how difficult it was to set up that process with your, your home computer? or whether or not you're using a work laptop? Sure. We certainly have, you know, I would advise folks to consult the telework toolkit online because it does provide, you know, those direct tools and resources for folks so that they can explore what technology platform they'd like to use when they're implementing teleworking. Um, but the um, platform we have just has a one-page tutorial when you, when you first start working here that guides you through the process of installing it on your own home computer. You also have the option of using a work computer or laptop um, from our workplace, so we have that flexibility and the ability to kind of customize and choose the option that works best for us. I just personally use my own home computer, and I have installed this software on there, and it's a very seamless experience. I just use my same login that I would use on my work computer. Many folks also use a laptop. Um, when they're working from home. So we have that flexibility. And different companies choose different uh, online platforms now. There's even Office 365 and tools like that, which provide a way to really very easily offer teleworking because they, as long as you have your login credentials, you have the ability to access your files and your email from home. So if that's a platform that your workplace is merging over to, that's another option as well. Additionally, as, as Mary mentioned, Office 365 and other cloud technologies become more and more common. Um, it's, that's a great option as you're able to access the files that you would have at your work desk, even if you're on a different computer than you would be at your workplace. That's a great point. Um, Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind um, going back to the web page, I know there's a lot of misconceptions about telework and what it is and what it isn't. Um, but one of the pages, I think, was the misconceptions or the myths. Sure. Because I know Mary was talking about her. Um, her child care, you know, this isn't a, a child care arrangement when she's working from home and it's not um, an elder care arrangement either. So uh, I'm just interested in sharing with the group now that we have a, we have just a few more minutes left um, on what some of those are and if the panel could give feedback on these misconceptions or other myths uh, or misunderstandings perhaps that friends, family, neighbors, co-workers or managers have had about you um, teleworking or your company teleworking? Sure, I can start just by going over this page a little bit. Um, this first uh, graphic kind of shows that there isn't a huge difference demographically between folks who telework and folks who work in, in an office or a stationary setting. Um, additionally, one of the things that Kim talked a little bit about 
was uh, this misconception that if I allow one or two employees to telework, then everyone will want to. And Kim spoke a little bit about um, sitting down with managers of different departments and deciding who would be a good candidate for teleworking and for some workers it's just not a feasible option. Um, it's also a misconception that if you can't see your employees, you can't manage them. I can speak from Triangle J's perspective. We also use Skype for business, but any sort of instant messaging essentially takes the place of walking over to someone's desk and asking what they're doing or asking for clarification on something. So there is a, a definite ease um, to manage people even when you can't physically see them. And Mary talked about child care and elder care. Pet care also, a teleworking day is not, you know, a day to be at home caring for your pets more than you would be when you're in an office. Um, it, it's working just as you normally are. So I don't know if others want to expand on any other misconceptions that you've come across. And if not, I can give the screen back to Go Triangle. Okay. Uh, well, if there's no other um, tips or information that the panelists would like to share, um, I have not seen any new questions come in in the Q&A um, or in the chat box. So I would just like to say thank you very much to our panelists. Thank you to those of you who logged in to participate in the webinar today. And um, as we mentioned, the, the panelists that we have are all eligible to telework, uh, so they speak not just from working with employers to establish programs, but also how they work within their own home. Um, the software that we're using right now is Zoom, and it's very similar to lots of other options that are out there. And this one actually allows us to have uh, web, uh, web video options, so much the way Lindsay just mentioned um, Skype office meetings, we can have virtual in-person meetings um, so you can actually see what someone's doing if that's important to you or you really need to have a face-to-face -face conversation in order to read facial expressions and see see what someone's really thinking instead of maybe just what their uh, their voice and tone is doing so for some of our guests though uh, they are actually teleworking today so we decided to forego that video option and have them a little bit more relaxed look while they're presenting so thank you again to everyone. Um, I hope that you will complete a survey that we'll be sending out later today to give us some more feedback on this. Um, I'm hoping that we will also be able to provide some of the statistics that Mary reviewed as part of her presentation. I thought those were very impactful and that you will complete the survey and provide us more information so we can continue to improve our programming that we provide for you through Go Triangle Employer Services, whether it's telework, bike, walk, um, carpool, or van pool. We all have um, options available to us, and we like to provide those um, to the employers across the triangle for free with any sort of consulting that you would like to have. So thank you again, and have a great day.